what did you think about um the Steve Jobs presentation of the the iPhone the the sort of the first iPhone you know phone uh, internet communicator and yeah. an iPod in your pocket yeah that you're going to sort of present the th- you're announcing three new products kind of thing and then saying that it's all in one just this is a good example one of the sort of historic mm-hmm. presentations of a product uh, uh, clearly there's like some showmanship that works some reason it works right it doesn't always work it often doesn't work but it did in in this case and often did for steve what like how did that feel um what part of the actually uh the design process was that presentation you know what i mean like from the early because you said sure, sure so consider the why the press release at the very exactly. beginning exactly Steve was doing that the entire time. He was working on that story from day one. Yeah. He was pitching us this, 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 and then this. And, and then he would look at our faces because you wouldn't, most people wouldn't, at least if you're working for him, wouldn't tell him what you really thought of what he was yeah. saying, but he would look at your faces. Yeah. And then he would talk to a few real trusted confidence outside of the, uh, outside of the organization and see what they thought. Right, and they could give him feedback on it, and they could really challenge him. But they could—he would also look at their faces and go, mm. "And so, when you see that, mm, then he would modulate it and change it slightly, and change it." So he was working during all of that time on the story and the storytelling, mm-hmm. right, and the whys, while we're working on that and helping us refine it, just like the switch from plastic to glass, right, all the time working on that. So when he comes out on stage, he does something that every marketer is told not to do. Say, these three things are now combined in one. That is like the, that they say that that is the laziest form of storytelling possible for marketing, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? But it was the best one because it was all those pains. It was yeah. like, I want my iPod, but I want my communications and I want my internet browsing because I want it on the go so I can look up things because it was in information. And when you were on the road, you had a laptop, you had an iPod and you had a phone that, and you had to carry all of these things with you at once. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to solve that pain for you and put it all together. So he was just showing you the pain and building that virus of doubt and going, it's now in this one magical thing. And he could come up and masterfully tell that story because he told it almost every day mm-hmm. to all of these people inside very quietly. And then it was just, right? It was like a you know a, a Tony Award winning play that had been worked on for ten years. But also the human came through. The of timing. Course. It was all that. It was yeah. all that. And of course he was dramatic at certain points, and he would raise his voice and a wry smile or whatever it right. was. Right. That, that it was right all those touches. Magic. He was an actor as well as a storyteller. Yeah, and that, but that... but it was the truth, right? The truth came through. It was a nonfiction story yeah. and then he added those personal flourishes on top of it to for dramatic effect it's but, amazing 